Hey, this is Paolo from Trivium, and you're listening to Sonic Perspectives. Roblox are shows in the stars. Another interview with Sonic Perspectives. My name is Samantha, and today I am joined with Paolo, the bass player and one of the creative forces behind Trivium. It's great to have you here today, and I am super excited to talk about Trivium's upcoming album, What the Dead Men Say. So I guess we'll just dive right in. I just want to hear your initial thoughts on what you have to say about the album. What are the sounds and the styles that the listeners can expect to hear, and what should fans be looking forward to? Well, thank you for having me on today. Um, I think if you are a longtime Trivium fan, I think you're going to be really excited with this one because I think it's one of our heaviest, most progressive records in quite a while. If you just started listening to us, especially with the last record, you know, it's a continuation of where we left off with uh, the sin in the sentence. Uh, it's not like a big departure, but I do feel like, you know, with Alex being in the band permanently, you know, he's really brought this whole new fire and energy to our band. So I think people can expect a lot of that. You just said this is a bit of a continuation off the sin in the sentence. Where is the biggest leap that you took creatively from your last album? Um, Having Alex in the band from day one with this record, as opposed to the last time he sort of came into the writing process like midway through. I think the biggest leap is just, you know, this one is a little heavier and more progressive it you know i think we didn't take a lot of i don't want to say that we didn't take a risk it was more of just like we knew what was working you know we've been writing a certain way you know we we kind of have found a, a solid style of like what trivium is and i think for us it's really just kind of pushing the bounds within or pushing within those boundaries of like you know what makes trivium work and um you could say a song like bleed into me is definitely like pushing those boundaries the furthest you know with the melody and just the timing and, and the tuning being this kind of like newer tuning that we've incorporated into our band over the last three records so you know we're definitely still trying to push some boundaries but i think overall we found this real solid style that works for us and we've just tried to make that better even if it's just little things of like you know trying to improve the mix or trying to get the overall vibe of the record you know a little bit better than this and in the sentence you know even if it's a little bit we're trying to push that much more you said that this is definitely a heavier album did you find that the heaviness was something that you intended to do or what did it grow organically during the songwriting process i think just the nature of our band it's like organic to go to heavy stuff right away i think a lot of times i think the first few songs we do are usually some of our heaviest just because Right out of the gate, we know that's a comfort zone for us. And I think it kind of helps us get the overall vibe of the record and where we want to go with things. You know, once we get a few songs in and we kind of got some of the heavier stuff out of the way, we usually try to experiment a little with some different stuff, maybe something a little more stripped back, something a little bit more melodic. But the heavier stuff for us, and especially, you know, when we're just letting it all go, that's like our, our comfort zone. How long in the songwriting process does it take you to get out of that comfort zone? And what really triggers that first exploration into something new? I think it really is just kind of like, you know, getting those first few songs out of the way. I think uh, you have to kind of know where things are going. And the only way to do that is to kind of jump in with the stuff you feel more comfortable with. And then once you kind of get that out of the way, I think you can start saying like, okay, where, where can this record go that, you know, we didn't plan for? And, you know, when I'm writing on my own, that's usually... The way I, I approach writing is I'll kind of write some stuff that's more what I'm expecting to hear out of a Trivium record. And then after a few, I'll just kind of, uh, you know, start kind of throwing caution to the wind and writing some different stuff. And that's how I get a song like Bleed Into Me to kind of come about. Given that so much went into the album musically, could you talk a little bit about the lyrics and the concepts that really drive the album? You know, a lot of the stuff we do with like lyrics, I mean, it kind of comes from different guys in the band, depending on where... You know, it starts with it. You could be even just like a title, like Amongst the Shadows and the Stones. Corey had that title and he had that hook in the demo. And I kind of took it from there and just like wrote lyrics to it. And, you know, I think a lot of themes that I'll go towards are just more of like looking out at the world and, you know, my perception of things, how I feel about it. And I guess you could say sometimes it's like the, the bleaker, darker side of the world and how 
it affects us, how it affects all of us. And um, I mean, there's definitely no shortage of topics with like things like that. And I feel like with metal music, that's like one of the best genres to really kind of tackle those subjects because I think the music is intense. It's it's darker and it doesn't shy away from doing things that I think other genres of music just would prefer to leave out, you know, because obviously you're not going to really get a lot of those same subjects in, say, a pop song because, you know, it'd be a big vibe killer, I think, a lot of times. But I think with metal, it's like you're working through things, you're expressing emotions and like it's cathartic. And I think, you know, working through tough subject matter with heavy music is cathartic. And I, I feel a lot of times when I meet fans, you know, they tell us about how our music affects them and how it's either helped them through things or helped them understand things about themselves. And if you were uninitiated to like metal music, you would read the lyrics and you'd be like, wow, this is kind of weird. It's kind of dark, a little, you know, maybe some stuff's kind of almost depressing, but the way that it works, especially with the live setting, you know, it really helps people to kind of get through those things. And for me, it, it's always been a help. I guess in a, in a way, it's like our own way of writing a diary, you know, but we're just putting it out for everyone to see and hear. Those themes are definitely important to the genre. How do you differentiate those themes, listening to metal as a fan versus being a creator? I guess everyone's kind of got their own view of the world and their own two cents when it comes to things. And I, I, it's not really a super hard thing to do. I think maybe as we've gotten older and, you know, we've gotten to travel the world a lot more and we kind of like have more of a perspective and point of view on things with me, you know, that maybe just comes with age, but I, I think it's definitely easier. And I think all bands kind of like can really touch on similar subjects, but kind of have their own way of expressing it. And, you know, that's kind of the beauty of music is you're all playing the same chords. We're all playing the same notes, but like we're expressing them differently. And I do think that applies to lyrics as well. Which song on the new album would you say that you connect to the most? I guess when I look at the record and I look at the songs that maybe I brought in to the rehearsal room, I'd probably connect to those probably the most just because I started with them and I, you know, got to see them from like the beginning, which is just writing on my laptop, you know, the whole way to the completion. And I would say like Catastrophist is definitely uh, one of those songs, Bleed Into Me uh, and the title track for sure. But, you know, every song took everyone's effort. So I do feel like each song has a special place in my heart because there was not a song where, you know, I wasn't at least like working on lyrics or or maybe coming in with a riff or suggesting a part change or vice versa or whatever it was. So I feel very connected to all of them. But those three in particular. You mentioned a lot about how the entire band is involved in the songwriting process and mm -hmm. taking the album from start to finish. Could you just walk me through what the creative process looked like for this album from when you first started yeah. up until its completion? I mean, the creative process starts with each of us writing a lot of riffs and demos at home on our own. And, you know, that that can kind of go on for a few months. Uh, there's really no time frame like Honestly, we're always all writing riffs, so people in the band are already writing riffs that'll end up on the record after this, and we really don't ever put a start time on that kind of stuff. But then there is a point where we're like, okay, we want to record the new record. We're going to have to start recording at this time, so that means we're going to need to start rehearsing and writing together at some point. And so we start to schedule things out, and we usually put the writing now between tours. Uh, we broke this writing process down into three different writing sessions uh, on our own and then um, when it was time to go into the studio we had all that stuff booked up we went into full sale in orlando we we partnered with them used their studio um josh wilbur producer came in and we we did about a day or two of extra pre-production with him which is like mainly just like setting the tempo maps um kind of going over everything giving it a once over to make sure everything was good and then we just tracked from there and the big difference this time was that we tracked everything uh guitars bass vocals first before we were tracked the real drums alex played on electric kit for the pre-production and then at the end of the process, we went out to L.A. and we did the drums at 606 Studio, which is Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters studio. Sounds like a lot went into this album in terms of time yeah. and commitment, and that really shows through. What I found really interesting was the there are some very short songs on the album and some very long songs. Mm -hmm. How do you balance between the heaviness and the melody, specifically on those longer songs, which are longer than a lot of bands that go as hard as you guys do mm -hmm. opt for? It really comes down to in, in this, not in the studio, but in the rehearsal room, you know, as we're playing it, like we, we're 
playing these songs over and over again and we're kind of getting a sense of like what's missing or what we feel like we could do more of or less of and kind of the overall thing in my mind was that I wanted to try to keep the record to about 45 minutes give or take um I figured we'd probably go over that and I think we did probably by a minute or two but there was this sort of thing of like okay we have all these long songs and we're kind of coming up to the end of the record like how much time do we have like if we could only fit 45 minutes worth of music onto a record you know what would we do and I think sometimes giving yourself a sort of uh artificial limitations can really help with writing or in a lot of ways like Sometimes when you have a deadline, you you end up working a lot better. You get into that like creative workflow where things just kind of come out. And I do think having a set limit of like, okay, we're going to try to keep it to this amount of music in this in this time. And, you know, it kind of dictates by the end of it that like, okay, we have a bunch of songs that are over six minutes long. We probably need a few songs that are maybe three to four minutes long. And what can we do with that? And like listening back to it now, like I'm really happy because it does... It did achieve what I wanted, which was this like balance and a record that feels replayable, that doesn't feel like it's this commitment to sit down and listen to. I do feel like records over an hour sometimes can really, of course, if Metallica puts out a record that's an hour and a half, I'm going to listen to the whole thing. But I feel like for the average band, it's it's tough to get people to listen to one song, let, let alone 10. So I want people to sit down and feel like it's not like a huge commitment to give 45 minutes to listening to Trivium. And I want them to feel like they want to replay it. And I... I do think time makes a big difference and having that like limit there was nice. Those longer songs definitely opened you up to some opportunities though. And I saw that a lot with the music video for Catastrophist, which was incredibly cinematic and very rich and involved. Can you talk a little bit about the music video, the concepts mm -hmm. behind it and how mm -hmm. you got to such a great final product? Well, I mean, working with a great director, Ryan Macfall, he gets all the credit for the creativity with the visuals. You know, we handed him the songs and he interpreted them in these really incredible ways. You know, when we talked to him, we did like an interview thing where we all talked together. Um, we put it up online. And it was like, got to kind of ask him about his influences and stuff and, you know, talk about working on music videos. And he really just says how he doesn't want to just do band videos where it's just a couple guys in a room playing together. He wants narrative. He wants to create, you know, really cinematic pieces of work. It's kind of one of those things where it's like we both share ownership in a way of, of this piece of work because obviously he did the work to make the visuals and we made the music and I love being able to partner up with people that are so creative and so interpretive and you know working with a guy like that it really shapes the visuals of the record you know even our live setting uh we're really hoping you know when we can get back out on tour like we're building this whole live show around essentially the first music videos like aesthetic and you know we wouldn't have come up with that had we not seen the video and had he not come up with a lot of those interpretations of catastrophists it was one of really my favorite things about working on videos is like seeing what a another creative person can do with something we give them like art we give them our art and we let them kind of take the reins and just go with it and build a world out of it it made for a really powerful music video. And both of the singles are really strong. So how did you choose which of the songs would be singles? Did you know from the get-go, or was that a decision made later mm -hmm. in the game? I mean, we knew we were going to release the title track at some point, and we had debated releasing that first because we did that with Sin in the Sentence. And, you know, had we done that, I, I would have felt fine with that as well. But Catastrophist sort of had this, uh, I think really the chorus kind of, was the thing that we wanted to kind of get out first. We really loved the hook. We love how that song turned out and how it was like this sort of epic building, brooding track that like kind of just explodes into this like progressiveness in the middle. And it really kind of showcased a lot of what comes on the record. And that was like one something we wanted to get out there first for people to show them that this wasn't just going to be, you know, cut and dry three minute kind of songs. This is going to be stuff that goes in different directions than you're expecting. Did it feel risky to put something like that out at first? Um, I mean, there's always risk with going with uh, any of the songs you could put out. And um, I'm always expecting a little initial pushback. But I feel like with the last record and this one so far, like the fan reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. And, you know, it's only allowed us to kind of release more and more stuff that's surprising people. Like what the Dead Men say, I think, has a whole different vibe than even Catastrophist. Um, and I think that was a real 
exciting one for fans to hear. And, you know, in the next day or so, we're going to be releasing another song that's probably one of the heaviest songs in the record. So I'm excited to see what people's reactions and what their, I guess, what their feelings of like all of the songs are now that there's going to be a little bit more music out there. And then, of course, when we release the record, you know, how do those songs feel once you get them in the context of a record and not just by themselves? Hearing you say the title of the album over and over again really drives home that's a very impactful album title, What the Dead Men Say. How did you guys come up with this album title and what does it necessarily mean to you? You know, I can't take total credit for coming up with it because I found it by, you know, as I'm writing lyrics, a lot of times I'm just taking notes and keeping a list of ideas that sound intriguing to me for later use. And one of my uh, one of my favorite science fiction writers, Philip K. Dick, uh, obviously very well known, has tons of books everyone knows about. But I found a short story that he wrote in the 50s called What the Dead Men Say, which was sort of, I guess you could say like, a an idea like the story was like the initial idea of a book he would later write and the music and lyrics that i was going with on that song started to really kind of like lend itself to a lot of the i guess you could say similar themes that he works with in his books which is like this sort of like altered state the sort of in between life i just was getting those vibes from the music and i love that title I i found it very intriguing and you know, a lot of his like books and stories are really spacey and out there and just like really kind of mind bending stuff. And I love that a lot of it doesn't really ever get explained. There's sort of this sort of uh, unknown to his stories. And I would say for the song itself, there's a sort of unknown aspect to it where I almost don't really know exactly where I was going with a lot of the lyrics. And I feel like because it has that to it, like the video went in a place that I was not expecting at all, which really surprised me. And I love because I think it's sort of nice to kind of have that sort of space and unknown aspect to the lyrics to where like, you know, on other songs, I can kind of give a lot clearer ideas of like, okay, this song was kind of inspired by this or that. Whereas this one is like, there's kind of an open interpretation to it. And I think the title is just so intriguing. And putting it onto our album title, it's just like a lot of people just are intrigued by it. I think our initial idea was to go with Catastrophist. And I think we made the right call with going with what the dead men say, because the the amount of interpretations is endless with it. I definitely feel like there's a almost poetic vibe, especially with the word catastrophist. That's definitely not a mm. word people hear every day. Was there a special intention behind that as mm. well? Yeah, I just kind of kept seeing people use that word online and in articles. And, you know, it wasn't being used in the context of its like actual literal definition. The literal definition is like this geological term, which is like the belief that the earth was shaped by quick and sudden like cataclysms and events in its history and um i kept seeing people using it more in terms of like ecological and climate related things and i really liked that i thought that was an interesting way to use it the biggest challenge i i feel like is getting across big ideas in like the amount of time and the amount of words you have in a song and having something as strong as a word like catastrophist is like really really important because you can really like extrapolate a lot of stuff from that it's like when i just saw that word i thought of so many things i thought of like almost like a villain in the world as and you know if you have a protagonist or an antagonist in a song i mean that it really really helps and especially with you know the song kind of dealing with like you could say all the different catastrophes that have befallen us either in the past or what's happening now or what's to come it it helped me write a stronger song and I guess like if I can personify what I'm trying to write about when it's not always a person or if it is a person to give it a real solid like title like that it just it clarifies things very much for me well what's happening right now certainly it does fall into the realm of unexpected and I suppose, cataclysmic events. Would you say that the current events with this pandemic are giving you any inspiration for a future album, be it time to creatively Mm. produce or thematically? I mean, it's definitely going to be time for writing music. Um, You know, I know Corey was writing some riffs and I'm always like thinking about new stuff. And, you know, I have my setup here at home, so it's very easy to record. And I'm sure that all of us will have plenty of ideas to have when it's time to rehearse and write again. And 
I mean, we have even songs from the last record that we didn't even get to for that are still in demo form that never even made it to the band rehearsal. So, you know, we have a lot of material to work with. And, um, you know, a lot of time those songs, the only reason they didn't get worked on was that not only did we run out of time, but we just didn't have maybe lyrics and stuff to them that seemed like they would have like made the record. I don't know, like would have benefited the record in any way. And, you know, maybe this time period being at home is going to influence some lyrics for those songs or for new songs. I definitely feel like when we come out of this, we're going to have some some thoughts that we'll probably want to put down into music. And um, I mean, this is an experience unlike anything the world has known in, in our lifetime, you know, on this level. And um, because it's a shared experience, I think lyrics about how it felt to live through will be very resonant with a lot of people. And uh, I'm sure we'll find something. It's really it's this kind of like you have to kind of wait and let that thing kind of hit you. I'm sure it'll uh, present itself at some point because, you know, we got nowhere to go and really just kind of sitting around and waiting and watching as, as things unfold. Aside from creating while we wait and watch, is there anything that you've been doing to keep yourself busy? Any new albums that you've been listening to? Favorite releases of 2020 mm. so far? Yeah, I've been trying to keep up with the new stuff coming out. I know the New Testament album I wanted to kind of dive into a little bit more. I think August Burns Red put out a new record I'd like to dive into a little bit more. It's really kind of been I feel like with the last few weeks, it's really just been a lot of press for the new record. So I haven't been able to give myself a chance to kind of dive into full records. I've been kind of like bouncing in and out of different stuff and um, going through the playlist. I think it was Bleed From Within had a really new good new song that I like that just put out. And, you know, once we kind of get through with the initial press of this record, I'm going to sit down with a couple of those records I've been wanting to listen to. But um, other than that, it's been kind of like doing some home workouts with my girlfriend just so we can both kind of stay in shape and stay sane and not just kind of sitting around going crazy uh, inside all day. Hopefully you, all the tour re- doesn't get postponed this summer and mm-hmm. everything goes off without a hitch. But assuming that the world does go back to normal, what are you most excited about moving forward with this album release? I mean, it's definitely playing the stuff live. When we're writing and recording, I'm always thinking about how it's going to play live and how people will react to it. And kind of the only thing in my mind that's really, uh, I guess, really the bummer is just like I don't get to experience that right away. And there's a chance it could be a while before we experience that. So if that's what happens, I mean, there's no way around it. But um, we're going to get to celebrate these songs at some point with our fans, whether it's, uh, you know, this year or not. It's yet to be seen, but it will happen at some point. All right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you. And, you know, stay safe and stay healthy. Yes, you too. Take care. All right, Bye-bye. You too. Bye. You just heard an interview with Paolo from Trivium. Trivium's latest album, What the Dead Men Say, comes out on April 24th. For more interviews like this one, be sure to follow Sonic Perspectives on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. To close out today, we'll be playing the first single from the album, titled Catastrophe.
You stole our innocence!